What's up, everybody? This is your boy Tech G back with another video to help you successfully pass the CompTIA 220 1001 examination. So let's get into it. In this video, we will be discussing wireless networking protocols for the 802.11 family of wireless networks, frequencies, channels, MIMO or MIMO, Bluetooth, NFC, RFID, ZigBee, Z-Wave, 3G, 4G, 5G, and LTE. The Wi-Fi standards. So there are five Wi-Fi standards. You have the 802.11b that has a maximum speed of 11 megabytes per second operating in the 2.4 gigahertz frequency band with the maximum indoor range of 35 meters. You have the 802.11a max speed of 54 megabits per second using the 5 gigahertz frequency band with a max indoor range of 35 meters. The 802.11g that is a maximum speed of 54 megabits per second operating in the 2.4 gigahertz frequency band with the maximum indoor range of 45 meters. And it is also backwards compatible with the 802.11b network. Then you have the 802.11n that has a max speed of 150 megabits per second when using a single 20 megahertz channel or it can run up at to about 300 megabits per second when it implements channel bonding or using the 40 megahertz channel. And this operates in the 2.4 gigahertz frequency by default, but it can also support the five gigahertz frequencies as well. The 802.11n has a maximum indoor range of 70 meters. It supports MIMO, which stands for multiple input, multiple output antennas to improve performance and range, although not all devices include multiple antennas. And finally, we have the 802.11ac network. This uses only the 5 gigahertz band and it supports up to 80 megahertz wide channels compared to 20 megahertz for the 802.11b and g networks and 40 megahertz for the 802.11n network using channel bonding. And it also supports MIMO or multi-user MIMO, I should say. And the speed of the 802.11ac is up to 433 megabits per stream when using the 80 megahertz wide channels that are in place. And here is a screenshot of the wireless Ethernet standards that you will need to get familiar with because I guarantee they will ask you questions about this on the exam. You can go visit my website, Technology G, and this chart will be posted on the website for you to review. Let's talk about wireless frequency differences. So wireless routers can use either the 2.4 gigahertz or the five gigahertz frequency band. And a lot of wireless routers offer both frequencies that can be configured separately. Some routers are even capable of being switched between the two frequencies automatically if a signal becomes weak and each has their own advantages and disadvantages. And here are some of them below. You have the 2.4 gigahertz band that performs at slower speeds, but it has a longer range. Lower frequencies tend to travel better through obstacles such as walls and doors. The 2.4 gigahertz is used more often, but is more channels that do overlap that can cause interference. Then you have the five gigahertz band that performs at faster rates, but typically has a shorter range. And the five gigahertz band is less used but it has more channels that do not overlap, which minimize interference. And here is another chart comparing the 2.4 gigahertz versus the 5 gigahertz wireless bands that you will want to get familiar with. Like I said, these charts are available on my website, technologyg.com. Let's talk about MIMO or multiple input and multiple output. So MIMO is a method for multiplying the capacity of a radio link using multiple transmission and receiving antennas to exploit multi-path propagation. MIMO has become an essential element of wireless communication standards, including IEEE 802.11N and 802.11AC. 
Some smartphones and tablets simply use the term MIMO if they support two or more 802.11n or 802.11ac streams. MIMO devices are available in the following configurations. You have the one by one where you have one transmit and one receive antenna. Two by two, you get two transmit and two receive antennas. Two by three, you have two transmit and three receive antennas. Three by two, three transmit, two receive antennas. And three by three, three transmit and three receive antennas. The number of transmit antennas typically corresponds to the number of data streams or spatial streams the device can support. So in the case of a router that supports both 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz signals, the specifications include this information for each band. Devices that have different numbers of receiving antennas and sending antennas may be identified by the number of data streams it can send and receive. So for example, a device that has a two by three antenna configuration can also be identified as having a two by three two configuration where it has two send antennas, three receive antennas, and a send receive support for two data streams. Bluetooth is a wireless technology standard used for exchanging data between fixed and mobile devices over short distances using short wavelength, ultra high frequency radio waves in the industrial, scientific, and medical radio bands from the 2.4 gigahertz band. And it is also used for building personal area networks or what is called Hands. Bluetooth runs in virtually the same 2.4 gigahertz frequency used by the 802.11 B, G, and N wireless networks, but uses a spread spectrum frequency hopping signaling method to help minimize interference. Bluetooth can be used to do the following. It allows for you to connect to wireless speakers, mice, keyboards, printers, and game controllers. You can transfer files between devices. You can control home security or automation devices, and you can integrate your smartphone with your car's audio or navigation system. And here are some of the various versions of Bluetooth. You have version 1.2 that offers a data transfer rate of one megabit per second. You have version 2 that offers 3 megabits per second, version 3.0 plus HS that offers speeds up to 24 megabits per second because it uses Bluetooth only to establish a connection and the actual data transfer happens over an 802.11 link. And this feature is known as an alternative Mac PHY or an AMP AMP. You have version 4.0, also known as Bluetooth Smart. This is designed for use with very low power applications such as sensors. You have version 4.1, which is a software update to 4.0. And this enables Bluetooth to perform multiple roles at the same time and to work with LTE cellular devices. Version 4.2, this includes additional features to support IoT or the Internet of Things. And then you have version 5.0. Which was designed specifically with the Internet of Things in mind. And here is a chart showing you Bluetooth power and their distance classes. Once again, this chart is available on my website, technologyg.com. So go ahead and get familiar with this just in case they ask you questions pertaining to this on the examination. Now, when it comes to the most common Bluetooth devices, the most common devices are called class two devices. And these are things such as printers, headsets, computer dongles, et cetera. To connect a Bluetooth device to a mobile device, Bluetooth needs to be enabled. Then the Bluetooth device needs to be synchronized or paired or linked to the mobile device. Sometimes the synchronization process requires a pin code. Once synchronized, the device needs to be connected. And finally, the Bluetooth connection needs to be tested. And here are some of the basic steps for how to configure a Bluetooth headset for an Android based device. So step one, you're going to go to the settings and connections and then enable Bluetooth. You're going to tap Bluetooth on the Bluetooth settings screen. You're going to prepare the headset by simply powering it on to begin the pairing process. Now, depending upon what type of headset you have, this part of the process can vary a little bit. Next, you're going to scan if the headset is not already scanning and keep holding the button on the headset until the Android device finds it. And on the Android device, you're 
going to tap the device to pair with. And then it's going to ask you to enter a pin code if prompted to do so. And typically many devices, if they do have a default pin, the pin is 0000. zero, zero, zero. And then to disconnect the device, but retain the pairing, you would just simply turn off the device to unpair the device. You would tap the settings icon on the screen and then tap the button that says unpair. And to use it again, you would just go through that entire process again of pairing it up. And here is a typical screenshot of an Android Bluetooth screen showing you what it might look like on your phone. And here is the process for pairing a Bluetooth headset with an iOS device, very similar to that of an Android. You would go to the settings, tap Bluetooth, and you would initiate the iOS device search to search for other devices. And then you would prepare the headset by simply powering it on to begin the pairing process. Tap the device name and it should automatically connect. And then you would enter a pin if it requires you to enter a pin. And to remove the device, you would tap it, open the screen, tap forget this device to stop the device but keep it paired you would just simply tap disconnect now be mindful that most bluetooth devices can only be connected to one mobile device at a time here is a picture of a typical ios bluetooth screen showing you what devices that you can possibly sync with and how to connect to the devices Near field communication is a set of communication protocols that enables two electronic devices, one of which is usually a portable device such as a smartphone, to establish communication by bringing them within four centimeters of each other. NFC enables smartphones to be used with payment services such as Apple Pay, Samsung Pay, and Android Pay. NFC also enables file transfer between supported devices. To transfer files between smartphones with NFC, both smartphones must have NFC enabled and NFC file transfer utility, which is sometimes referred to as tap and go. That has to be enabled as well. I think some of the tap and goes are called S Beam for Samsung smartphones and Android. Android Beam for Android phones. And once that is enabled, you will simply tap the phones together to transfer files. Also, NFC can be used with compatible printers for tap to print capabilities. Radio frequency identification, also known as RFID. So RFID uses electromagnetic fields to automatically identify and track tags attached to objects. An RFID tag consists of a tiny radio transponder, which is a radio receiver and transmitter built into one. When triggered by an electromagnetic interrogation pulse from a nearby RFID reader device, the tag Tag permits digital data, usually an identifying inventory number. It sends that stuff back to the reader. And this number can be used to inventory goods. And there are two different types of RFIDs out there. You have passive tags. These are powered by energy from the RFID readers interrogating radio waves. And then you have active tags. And this is powered by a battery that can be read at a great range from the RFD reader to where it can be read from upwards of a few hundred meters away. Some examples of RFI technology. So you have security badges that will allow doors to be unlocked in a secure environment, giving access to some while denying use to others. You have some items for sale. They have RFID tags used for identifying the item name and price. The badges on the items broadcast their information to a checkout reader, which could allow for customers to simply walk out of the door and the items are counted, priced, and paid for by just simply walking past the reader. And you can find an example of that with the store called Amazon Go. Amazon Go is pretty much a store where just like I just stated, walk in there, grab an item and walk out. And guess what? That is how you pay for the item. It charges you through RFID for the most part. Look it up, Amazon Go. And then you can also use RFID for passports and other identification documents that may have an RFID chip embedded in them. And you could think of a dog collar or some type of pet collar that may have an RFID chip embedded in it. So when your dog wanders the neighborhood and is lost, you simply log into your computer and find out exactly where your dog is wandering around. 
Next, we have Zigbee and Z-Wave. So Zigbee is a low power, low data rate and close proximity personal area network or wireless ad hoc network. Zigbee is intended to be simpler and less expensive than other wireless pans such as Bluetooth or more general wireless networking such as Wi-Fi. Applications include wireless light switches, home energy monitors, traffic management systems, and other consumer and industrial equipment that require short range, low rate wireless data transfer. Zigbee operates in the 2.4 gigahertz frequency. Z-Wave is a more recent version of Zigbee that uses less power and operates on the much lower 908.42 megahertz frequency. Zigbee and Z-Wave are not interoperable. And then we have 3G, 4G, 5G, and LTE. So these networks are provided from cell towers. The G stands for generation, and each new generation of network service provides advanced signaling and available services. Most cell phones in use now support 3G, 4G, and LTE. 5G, for the most part, is still in development and testing right now. Once they start bringing out the automation and the robots where everybody is fearful of losing their jobs because we have driverless cars roaming all around, you can thank 5G for making that happen. And here is a comparison chart of 3G, 4G, 5G, and LTE. Once again, you can find this chart on my website, technologyg.com. All right, so let's go ahead and get into some check on learning, shall we? So the first question is, Bob is implementing a new wireless network in his home office and needs assistance in selecting his equipment. He needs something that won't interfere with his 2.4 gigahertz phones and that has speeds that can reach 54 megabits per second. Which wireless standard would you suggest to Bob? Would it be 802.11G? Would it be 802.11B? Would it be 802.11C? Or would it be 802.11N. So he needs something that will not interfere with his 2.4 gigahertz phones and it can reach speeds of upwards of 54 megabits per second. The correct answer is uh, 802.11N. 802.11N network that can operate at the 2.4 or the 5 gigahertz frequency band and it has a maximum theoretical speed of 300 megabits per second when channel bonding of 40 megahertz is implemented. Next question. A network of devices used in your car, such as connecting your cell phone to the car via Bluetooth, is known as what kind of network? Is it man? Is it LAN? Is it PAN? Or is it WAN? So a network of devices that is used in your car to connect your phone via Bluetooth is called what type of network? The correct answer is uh, PAN, a personal area network. Remember, these are networks designed just for you, typically in very short range, connecting your cell phone to your car via Bluetooth or connecting a set of Bluetooth speakers to your cell phone would both qualify as a pan. And the final question is uh, the IEEE 802.11G standard is backwards compatible with which standard? Is it 802.11N? Is it 802.11a, is it 802.11b, or is it 802.11ac? So the G network, the G wireless network is backwards compatible with which standard? The correct answer is 802.11b. It is backwards compatible with that. All right. So in summary, we have talked about wireless networking protocols where we talked about the 802.11 ABGN and AC wireless networks, frequencies, channels, MIMO, Bluetooth, NFC, RFID, Zigbee, Z-Wave, 3G, 4G, 5G, and LTE. Now, if you felt like you got something valuable out of this information, please go ahead and hit the like, share, and drop a comment below. And also please hit the subscribe button and also, go visit my website, Technology G, so you can get read up on the latest and greatest to help you successfully pass the CompTIA A Plus 220 1001 examination. And until next video, ladies and gentlemen, 
Peace.